Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to plant a few more things out on the new property. In fact, yesterday we planted a Wichita blue juniper and some blue blazes hyssop. And it's just so exciting to see new things going out there. It makes me feel like the space is coming together. And today we have some beautiful shrubs. So I've got a couple varieties of butterfly bush, a Miss Ruby and a blue chip. We've got a couple of proudberry coral berries, one of which I planted in a fall container arrangement in this container last year and it's still looking pretty good. A little gangly because we had it tucked in in the greenhouse, but I think it'll be happy to be out of that container. And then two summer wine nine barks, which I'm so excited about these because they've got red leaves. I'm excited to get a little bit more um, color contrast going on out there. So let's talk about butterfly bushes first. It is ideal if you can get a hold of butterfly bushes earlier in the season to get them planted as early as possible. It gives them a chance to really root into their spot. Uh, they tend to transplant the best that way. However, I've planted them at multiple different times of the year and they do fine so long as you just monitor water and all of that sort of thing. Uh, the thing with these is you just wanna make sure they're not ever sitting in too much water, that they've got good drainage and you even wanna plant their root ball up a little bit above soil level so that no water can kind of go into the crown of the plant and rot them out. That's kind of the considerations when you're going to plant some of these things. I think they're gonna be very happy out there because full sun, they'll get they'll be plenty dry uh, because we are the ones who irrigate most of the time. We don't get a lot of rainfall, so we can really monitor the moisture level out there. They'll get plenty of airflow and all of that, like lots of airflow. <laughs> There's no break from the wind out there. So anyway, blue chip right here. I think it's blue chip. In fact, Erin and I went plant shopping at a nursery about 45 minutes away a couple days ago, and I had to have this one even though it didn't have a tag. Uh, but I think it's blue chip. Grows 24 to 30 inches tall and wide, so a smaller statured butterfly bush, which I love those types uh, because you can tuck them in at the edge of flower beds instead of having to kind of put, uh, pop them back a little bit. And they're typically full of blooms from middle summer all the way through a frost for us, and they bring in butterflies and bees like crazy. This one here is called Miss Ruby. Getting a little breezy out here today. Feels really nice. Uh, Miss Ruby has these really bright kind of fuchsia pink blooms. I really like them. They've got an orange throat too, if you're looking close. So they kind of have a glow quality. This one grows four to five feet tall and wide. So one will tuck back a little bit behind some other things, but both zone five through nine. Let me tuck these back, bring my nice proud berry forward here. Now I've talked about proud berries before. I've talked about butterfly bushes before too. I love this shrub. We have them in a couple other areas of our landscape. They grow three to four feet tall and wide. I love the shape of their leaves. They're kind of like these cute little round buttons and they usually have kind of like a bluish green look to them. They bloom like early to, early to mid summer, uh, kind of like a light white pinkish bloom. They're kind of insignificant blooms, but they are followed by the most glorious clusters of pink berries. In fact, you can see on this one, they're, well, you can see on both of them, but they're starting to form. And so this whole thing will be these just really beautiful bright pink berries. The other thing I really appreciate about these, um, other than the fact that they can take our high pH soils and our full sun, is that they bloom on new wood and fruit on new wood and they benefit from a severe cutback every year. You wanna cut the entire shrub back to about a foot. It almost feels wrong. Every time I do it, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna kill this plant. And every time they come back so full and beautiful. They also are really great for cut arrangements. I use them all the time because they seem to hold on to their berries and some plants don't. Some you'll cut and they'll start dropping berries all over the place, but these really just stand up to that. Um, in fact, whatever berries are left on the shrub that the birds leave look really beautiful with a layer of snow. I'm sure we have a picture somewhere of one of our coral berries with snow on their berries. Uh, they're also zone three through seven, so very, very winter hardy. Let me set this on the ground. We'll bring up one of the summer wines. Oh, these are such beautiful shrubs. I love the depth of color here. In fact, let's look at it from above. It always looks better to see the tops of the leaves right here. They look so gorgeous and they're so adaptable and they're so fast growing and they require hardly anything from us because really you want to avoid pruning nine barks if you can. They have a naturally, like a natural, graceful kind of arching vase like, I don't know how to describe it, structure. If you start to prune on them, that's totally fine. You can do that if you want to, but it will kind of mess up that natural form. They'll never really regain that. So you do want to pick a nine bark that will fit your area. Um, so this one grows four to six feet tall and wide. So it's not a massive shrub, but pretty, I mean, pretty decent size. And out there we can just let them do their thing 
and grow to their full size. I'm excited about that. Zone three through seven, I also use stems of this in cut arrangements a lot. They don't tend to wilt, they hold up for quite a long time. So I'm gonna get these all in the gator and we're gonna head out to where we're gonna plant them. got everything planted out here so I want to give you a little tour of where they ended up. First off the summer wine nine bark I think before I said it grows four to six feet tall and wide that is false it grows six to eight feet tall and wide so I made sure that it has plenty of space in this area to grow. Now I do have an eastern red bud here which will eventually shade this area and I'm very much so looking forward to that time but for several years it's going to be full sun that's just how new gardens go you kind of have to plant everything for full sun um, if you want things near your trees and then as the tree grows you need to move things and I'm totally fine doing that uh, right in front here we've got some Tuscan Sun Heliopsis uh, which actually this is the front of the flower bed but you can see we've got our grass pathway planted and it's just now starting to sprout and come up so we're trying to stay off of it so this is kind of the front view right here, which I will show you later on. Uh, around the back side here, the flower bed actually comes all the way out to about here. <laughs> so this whole thing will be planted behind the summer wine, but it's just adding such beautiful color that I was really missing out here. Uh, if we come further down this way, this is where we planted the blue chip. So the edge of the flower bed is right here. You can see a sprinkler comes right this way. So this will just be a beautiful little accent. We've got some Arctic fire yellow dogwoods right there. 
and then I'll come in with some other kind of perennial. I'm thinking some sedum, right, as a front kind of plant. And I'm planning on along the pathways here just doing perennials in this area, and then the rest of it will be trees and shrubs. We'll see. I might start creeping in with <laughs> perennials throughout as well. And then, kind of all out by its lonesome, I've got the Proudberry Coralberry. Uh, and this will be beautiful right here. The reason why we skipped this area is I do think we're going to come in possibly with a pallet walkway out here. Just a little one to kind of help navigate through the flower bed area. Um, because, you know, we're going to have to get in here to maintain it. And we're going to want to walk around and look at things too. So we want to make sure that there's a way to navigate that that makes sense. So I wanted there to be space between this Arctic Fire Yellow and whatever we end up doing over here to put that in. The rest of the plants are on the other side. Here's the other nine bark. There's a Corinthian Linden behind, Spring Grove Arborvita, and then a bunch of other things. We've got the Tiger Eyes Sumac. Uh, one of the uh, Budlias I put back there too. We'll head back in a second. There is a Shawnee Brave Bald Cypress right here. It's so fun, you guys, not having a rigid planting plan. We're just plunking things that we like wherever we think it looks good. <laughs> That's how we're going uh, for this area. And it's just, I think it's gonna be fun to watch it evolve, not really knowing. I'm kind of knowing what I want it to be in the end-ish, what I want it to look like, but not really knowing what plants we're going to choose to get it there. Um, as a side note, we are gonna be uh, removing the high tunnels and that area will be all planting area as well. So we'll put some other trees and evergreens back there. And while the high tunnels are super practical to have and super nice to have, not the best to look at, so I'm very excited to move those. Anyway, thought I would mention that. Let's look at the butterfly bush over here. So you can see with the Spring Grove Arborvitas, we did a grouping of three, and there are several things I've done grouping of threes, like the totem pole grasses. We did a, a hedge of actually six of the hydrangeas, a grouping of three sumacs. But there are some things I just want singles, like I just want a single specimen. Uh, I don't want to do everything in big groups. Uh, so this one right here, the Miss Ruby, I think will be beautiful right here. The edge of the walkway is here-ish. So being four, what is it, four to five feet tall and wide? Now I'm all messed up on my, my sizes. Hopefully I got that right. We'll have some space to do some other things around it. And then the last coral berry shrub is just right over here. Now I had to go all the way around to get there, but you can see it's between the juniper we just planted and the totem pole grass. There's also a black lace elderberry just behind that totem pole grass. I think that'll be a beautiful little shrub right there. Well, that's pretty much it for today's project. The grass sprinklers just turned on. Do you have them running for like three minutes at a time? Just three minutes just to keep the soil moist enough to get the grass seed up. And it's beautiful out today. 84 is our high. It's getting really cool, like in the low 50s at night. So it takes all day to get to 84. It's just, it's lovely. After two months of 100 plus, I just, I'm soaking in the temperatures. It's so perfect for planting. Um, we are going to continue planting more things out here. I've got a few things to plant in uh, around our house as well, but I did want to let you know that next week we're going to be putting up kind of a series of videos showing how we keep up on our garden space. I've talked to you guys about it before, showed you how we zone our garden, uh, but I actually wanted to take you through and do the work and show you what we do in each zone in order to stay on top and not have like something get out of control. I mean, we still get weeds. We still have lots of things that need to be uh, maintained and deadheaded, uh, but we do have a fairly good system in place so that nothing gets out of control. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know, I, those videos may not come up one right after another, but I do know we're gonna put up Monday Zone on Monday. So that's what you can expect to see at the beginning of next week. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.